Hey everyone, this is Rebbe Goldwasser and this YouTube video slash podcast will be talking about boundaries. Boundaries is when you protect your personal space. I will be addressing a four prong process in which I show you each step of how to protect your personal space. If somebody behaves, talks, reacts, responds, or just gets into your space, whether it's with their tone of voice, your husband, your boyfriend, your friend, your teacher, your boss, whatever it is, there are ways of handling it. This four step boundary bottle will absolutely protect your space and teach you what to do, when to do, and most importantly, how to do it. So check it out. Hey everyone, this is Revy Goldwasser and let's step right away into my four step boundary model. This boundary model is something that I actually discovered and therefore implemented shortly after I left my husband. After 20 years, I was in a very, um, uh, really, I was in a relationship that had a lot of anger and many times, not only my husband, but friends and even colleagues and work, I would find myself really being talked down to, uh, patronized, people saying things to me that just weren't okay and I never really knew how to deal with it, how to cope with it and what to do with it. And after I left my husband and one of the things that I really discovered on my own journey is boundaries. And I'm like, gosh, you know, why didn't somebody tell me about this when I was like in high school? So I really believe that the boundary model can protect your personal space. And more importantly, what this boundary model does is it's going to embolden you and empower you and make you strong that you'll eventually see that you don't even need to apply this four step process because you're going to show up in this way of being and exude that level of, you know, don't cross my boundary or else. And people are going to sense it. They're going to feel it in you and they're not going to overstep your boundary just because your energy is going to exude that. But we got to get there because if you're watching this video, you probably have a lot of issues with people that do talk down to you, that do say things that are not appropriate and you either buckle to it, acquiesce to it, surrender to it and don't do anything about it because you simply don't know how. So I'm excited to share with you my four step boundary model. And by the way, if you're on the YouTube down on the links, there will be an actual uh, website address to my, to my website, fearlesswoman.co, where I give away for free my four step boundary model. So check it out. So here's the first one. So let's assume it is your husband. So I'm going to use probably a lot of personal examples that I have, but it can really be anyone or anything. So let's say your husband somehow comes into the dinner table and says something like, you know, um, your food is terrible or you don't know how to, you know, take care of the kids or something that's not okay with you. It, it can be that simple. I'm a big believer that it, I don't care what it is. If it's some, if, if somebody says something to you, that's not okay with you, you have every right to stand up for yourself. Cause remember guys, if you don't stand up for yourself, no one else will. Right? So we set our example by showing up that way. So if your husband says something to you like, you know, you, you are doing such a terrible job raising the kids or you're so stupid, you're so dumb or any type of demeaning or even verbal abusive uh, type of behavior, what you do in this four step boundary model is you practice the first step. And it's very important to go through these four things because it almost helps you build the crescendo and the strength to get there because you can't do four without doing one through three. And more importantly, it, it, it makes you feel safe that you gave that person a warning. So here's what, what we do is the very first a boundary model is simply politely say, listen, John, um, that's not okay how you speak to me. It's very hurtful. I, I feel very hurt, very insulted, and I don't want you to speak to me like that again. So please don't speak to me like that again. That's it. You're being polite. You're being clear. And you're just basically saying it's hurting your feelings. Again, you have every right. If somebody says something or, you know, speaks to you in a certain way, that's not okay to you. And especially if they're family or loved ones or, you know, spouse, boyfriend, etc. This is not somebody that you're just going to see at a grocery store once and won't see them again. Most people forget about it. You know, they're having a bad day, you blow it off. But if this is somebody that's continuously in your life, 
you absolutely need to honor yourself and step up. So, you know, that person may be like, you know, what the hell is up with you? I've never heard you say anything like that because they're not used to you saying this, right? Because again, you probably never practiced your boundary model to protect your personal space. So do not even expect them to honor that statement. They usually don't. But again, I'm not doing this for them. I'm doing this for you to honor your space. This is how you build, you know, what I call the muscle. You're, you're flexing your boundary muscle to become stronger and stronger. So for sure your husband, boyfriend, whatever, they're going to make another n not nice comment to you that's mean, that's that's abusive, emotionally abusive, verbally abusive, or just embarrassing, whatever it is. So let's say we're back now in the living room and all of a sudden your husband walks in and he's like, you know, once again, you screwed this up and you're so dumb and you can't figure out how to do anything right or whatever the heck he may say to you. By the way, not okay. It is not okay for anyone to speak to you in that way, period, never, ever, just so you understand that. And by the way, what happens, a lot of people, they get so used to being spoken to like that, that it becomes their normal. And that is actually very dangerous. And hopefully, you know, I'm going to be the one that's snapping you out of it. Nobody gets to speak down to you. Nobody gets to insult you. Nobody gets to patronize you, to be condescending towards you, to be mean to you, rude to you, obnoxious. It just doesn't happen. And unfortunately, a lot of people, especially women, I'm always going to speak on the voice of the woman, is we're so used to it that it becomes our normal. But I'm going to tell you that that's a toxic relationship. There's nothing normal about somebody speaking like that towards you. So just understand that. So here we are, stage two, of uh, part two of the boundary model. You're once again having this interaction with the same individual. And now you have to be very forceful and direct in how you communicate the second prong of the boundary model. And it's going to go something like this. It's not perfect, but this is how it's going to go. You're going to say, listen, John, I already told you before that I do not appreciate how you speak to me. Don't do it again. That's it. Now you're being forceful, with command, confident, assertive, and you're making it very clear. You're not apologizing. You're not giving like a little excuse. Oh, it hurts my feelings. It feels bad. We did that the first stage. Second stage, they don't get that again. Now you're going to be very direct and clear. John, do not speak to me like that again. I've already told you before that that's no longer acceptable. Do not speak to me like that again, period. Okay, so that's number two of the boundary model. Now, again, I'm going to give you a heads up that they're not going to probably take you seriously because, again, they're used to talking to you like that. And all of a sudden, you're changing the rules of the game, right? All of a sudden, you're behaving in a way that's actually quite peculiar and not typical of you. They're not going to really know what to do with that. They're, you know, they're not going to, they're going to be almost surprised by it. And probably on this stage too, something's going to click with them. They're going to be like, you know, what's going on with her? Like what's happening? And they might even make a comment towards you. And I know it's scary. And, and again, you may not be able to do all these four right away, but just being conscious of it and start saying things like you may find that you have to say number one a few times, but just saying number one a few times will get you the courage to get to the second stage, which will then get you to the courage of saying the third and the fourth. So again, it's not a, a, a cement rule, right? This is not a hard formula, but it is a four-step process to help you once again, get strong, get confident, and recognize that no person should speak to you like that. They just shouldn't. And if you say, ah, oh, Revy, it's okay. Ah, oh, Revy, I'm used to it. I'm here to tell you that it's not right. It's not right just because you're used to it or because you think in your mind he doesn't really mean it or he doesn't mean anything bad by it. I'm here to tell you that that's wrong because it's called, it's called emotional abuse, verbal abuse. And inside, every time he says that something to you, like there's a little, uh, there's another little chip that is being taken away from you to honor you. Okay. So that's step number two, being very clear, very concise communicating to that same person that they no longer can speak to you like that again. Got it? Get it? Good. Okay. Third one. So again, guys, I'm going back to one and two. You may not be able to go from one to two so easily. You may have to do one a few times and then get to two because when you start practicing the boundary model, especially when it's a new thing to you, this is, I know what happened to me. I used to get hot. Like my neck would get hot and my chest would get hot and I would kind of sweat a little bit because it was so 
uncomfortable for me. It was so foreign to me for me to exert any form of self-protection and self-preservation. I had never even understood what that concept was because I never practiced that way of existence. I was always worried about everything and everyone else and never about me. So it is a very counterintuitive, but that, my dear fearless woman, is why you know you're doing something right. Okay, third one. So once again, you're gonna be in a situation, the living room, the kitchen, barbecue, restaurant, out with friends, whatever, and he's going to once again go right back in there and, you know, make a comment that's embarrassing, that's rude. Oh, you know, what do you know, Revy? Like, you know, you didn't, you didn't even go to, you didn't even get your high school degree or you didn't even go to college or you're just a stay-at-home mom. What do you know? You don't even know how to make a dollar or, you know, oh, just keep your mouth shut. What do you know? Like, whatever rude comment, obnoxious thing that that person might say. And by the way, especially when it happens with a boyfriend or a husband. And, and guys, if you're a man watching this, it could be flipped, of course. It could be your wife, your girlfriend. Um, it's not okay. It's not okay, especially when it's somebody that's supposed to love you until death do you part, you know, that take the vows and you have children with. I mean, if you really think about it, a partner like that, a, a boyfriend or a husband, of all people, they should be the ones that speak the best of you and honor you the most and be the most in awe of you and love you and cherish you. They shouldn't be the one to barrage you and, and verbally abuse you. So again, I'm here to remind you that there's nothing okay, nothing okay with that type of a behavior. And the only person that can do something about that is you. They're not gonna change. Why would they change? They're used to speaking to you like that. They probably speak to people like that all over, not just you. They probably do it the worst with you. They, they tend to be most verbally abusive and, and crossing those boundaries with their loved ones, ironically. But I'm not here to figure him out. I'm not here to figure him out. I'm not here to understand why he does that. I ain't even given him the excuse anymore. I've been there, done that. I was married for 20 years. And afterwards, when I left, I realized that he was never, ever, ever going to change. The only person that can change is you. Do you understand that? Again, I repeat, the only person that can change is you. So if you have the ability to change and recognize that you have to protect your boundaries, you have to stand up for yourself, there's going to be a change. Okay, number three. This is probably a hard one because what's going to happen in the third boundary model is you're giving a consequence to this behavior. You're basically saying that if this happens again, you're going to do, if X happens again, you're going to do Y. And the reason why this is really critical is because you have to be sure that you can do the why. What do I mean? Let's say like this. Once again, rude, insulting, demeaning, degrading, all those things, public, private, I don't care what it is. And you know what? It's now getting to a point that it's enough. So it's gonna sound something like this, the third boundary model. You know what, John? I am sick and tired of you speaking down to me like this. I have asked you politely, I have also been very firm, and you're just not listening. So if you ever talk down to me like that again, I will leave you, or I will break up with you, or I will move out, or this relationship, you know, we'll, we'll have to separate, or, you know, whatever that consequence is, it has to be a severe enough consequence that that person will be like, what is going on? So if this other person really does love you and really does care about you, hopefully at this third stage, it's going to click. And they're going to be like, wait a minute. I, I don't even recognize what's happening here. Is it me? What's kind of going on? And again, I've already told you guys, we're not in charge of changing them. We're not in charge of controlling their behavior. We're not in charge of even telling them what to do. I'm going to have a whole different video, so do check that out about being codependent. And there's a lot of um, um, there's a lot of interlays between when you're codependent, when you're dealing with this verbally abusive person, because codependents we have this m magical attraction to people that are toxic, and that'll be in the codependent uh, video. It's really interesting, and I am for sure. Well, I was codependent. I learned after my divorce that I was textbook codependent, and that my husband was textbook narcissist. But I learned and I've changed and I'm, I am like nothing like I was before. I'm, a, I'm 180 degrees different to where I was. So I do believe that anyone can change. I do believe that anyone can be transformed. I do believe that you can absolutely have a transformation, but it's going to depend on one person and that person is you. Okay, so you said the third one. Again, we're going to repeat. John, 
I've already told you before, politely and then very firmly, that I will no longer accept that type of talk towards me. If you do that again, I'm leaving you. If you do that again, we're getting a divorce. If you do that again, I'm moving out. If you do that again, our friendship ends. If you do that again, I'm gonna quit my job. Whatever it is, they need to understand that you mean business, but the one who really needs to understand that you mean, you, uh, mean business is you. Okay, so fourth one's gonna come. I'm gonna put my hair down. You're gonna find that I like playing with my hair. Maybe I'll actually. I play with my hair, guys, a lot. You're going to have to bear with me. I have a hair thing, and I, like, fidget around, so I'm sorry. I get comments all the time. Revy, you always fidget with your hair, and you're always moving. I can't help it. I have a lot of energy. So anyway, I put the hair back up. I can't even see how it looks like because I'm on the camera. I'm sure. Ho hopefully, it's fine. Fourth one. It's hard. If you're dealing with a fourth one, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, it is critical that you execute and you execute based on the consequence of boundary model number three. If you do not execute on number four, and again, you may not be able to do it right away, okay? I'm assuming, again, you're doing one, two, three, four, but honestly, it took me maybe like six or seven months to practice this concept of getting the nerve and getting the guts because it's frightening. Again, we as people, especially women, when we're in this type of a relationship, we are weak. We are vulnerable, we are frightened, in some way, shape, or form, we, we feel like maybe we deserve it, we feel like you know it's really who we are. There's a lot of underlying subconscious limiting beliefs, which by the way is not true, and these are all things we'll be talking about here on my YouTube channel, totally not true, that have basically put you in this situation that you've accepted this type of language towards you. And again, I'm gonna tell you, not okay not okay so here comes the fourth one obnoxious attitude obnoxious words disgusting mean cruel makes you cry all that kind of stuff that i can't stand can't stand that and honestly you don't even have to tell them anything on the fourth one because you're executing on your consequence which is leaving him moving out ending the friendship quitting the job whatever so you know but you can do the fourth one and you can say you know what? I am done. I have told you repeatedly that this type of language, demeanor, attitude, words, how you speak to me, patronizing me, condescending me, et cetera, embarrassing me, being mean to me, is not okay. I want a divorce, or I'm moving out, or it's over. And then you execute, and then you execute. You move out. You get a divorce, you break up, you know. And, and these four steps, it could be months. It, it's not something that's gonna happen, you know, in two minutes. It could be something that maybe can take you several years. You could be doing one for a year and then doing step two for a year and doing step three for a year. I don't recommend step three for a year, the one with the consequence, because it's like the boy who cries wolf, right? You know, no one's really gonna believe you. But what does happen many times, especially with marriages, I know it happened with me, is that it takes a lot of huevos to get a divorce, especially when you're married for 20 years. Kids and memories and a home and assets and money. and that, it's, it's, it's a very difficult decision. So I get it. I totally get it. But this four-step boundary model, guys, it's like your Ten Commandments. It gives you a foundation in which to refer to to protect yourself. Because if you don't honor you, no one else will. Right? It's like attracts like. If you don't say, hey, that's not okay, you can't talk to me like that, then people will always talk down to you like that. And I can assure you that this type of behavior is not happening just from your spouse. I bet it's happening all the time with your parents, with your siblings, maybe with your kids, with your um, a spouse, obviously, with work. I know with me, I recognized that this was a common theme in my life. Obviously, it wasn't so bad at work. I mean, they're not going to call me stupid and dumb. Um, you know, that's not going to happen. But there was a lot of um, me walking on eggshells and not wanting to upset people. And, and if they did yell at me, I would just accept it. I wouldn't defend myself. I wouldn't step up, especially if I felt they were wrong. I wouldn't say something. So this all goes back to issues, the underlying issues of, of you know, knowing your worth, which we'll talk about in a separate video about 
you know, being needy and having needs and knowing your worth because it, it, it really all ties together. But this four-step boundary, guys, this four-step boundary model at the very least gives you a, a, a outline of how to honor yourself. So let's review all four again. The first one, politely and nicely tell that person to stop. Hey, John, please don't speak to me like that again. It's very hurtful. I, it hurts my feelings. I don't like it. It's embarrassing. You do it in front of the kids. You do it in front of our friends. Please don't do that. It's very, very mean and it hurts my feelings, number one. Number two, fir uh, firmly and, and with command. John, I've already told you before that this type of language is not acceptable to me. Do not speak to me like that again. And then you zip your lip. You don't even need an explanation or a definition or a, or a defense. Just be clear about it. The third one has the consequence. John, I've told you numerous times that this type of language and behavior with me is not okay. If you do this again, I want a divorce. If you do this again, I'm moving out. If you do this again, our relationship is over. If you do this again, I'm gonna quit this job. You get it? Okay. Number four, if it happens again and you've hit that threshold, the trigger that it's done, you can tell them, you know what? It's over. I've told you so many times, I've given you plenty of warnings. I could not have been more clear. I'm out, we're getting a divorce. And then you have to execute. And again, off record, you may not be able to execute that fourth time. It may take a few times. Even with me and my husband, I think we were separated a few times, we even talked about a, a, a divorce a few times. It probably took a couple of years towards the end. Again, a 20-year marriage is no joke. It's not a perfect exact formula that it's gonna happen in one month, but here's, here is what happens with the four-step boundary model. Once you become strong and because you're exercising it, then it does happen in a matter of minutes, seconds. I mean, it's like you show up at is it. You, you are it, you exude it. No one today, very, very few people cross my boundary. I walk into a room and I command that room because no one is going to overstep my boundary again. It's just not happening. And if they do, I tell them right away, please don't speak to me like that. That's hurtful. And it's happened to me a few times, even with my best friends. But the minute it happens, you know what I do? Within, within the 24 hours, I give them a call and I say, listen, I need to talk to you and we talk about it. And nine times out of 10, at this point, when you are exerting your boundaries, most people don't even realize they're doing it and they don't even know it. And the people that love you, here's the paradigm shift. The people that truly love you and honor you don't want you to be hurt. And they just don't know that they're doing it. So by you having those boundaries and exerting that, they'll correct their behaviors in two seconds. They just don't know they're behaving that way. And again, if they truly love you and that's called unconditional love, they will change. And if they don't, you know what to do. Because number four is when you execute on your consequence from number three and you are out of there. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed my four-step boundary model. I am, hopefully everything worked out in this video. I just checked to make sure my mic was on because imagine if I spoke for half an hour, my mic wouldn't have been on. I would have been so upset. So anyway, check out the link below, which will have my blueprint. Uh, hopefully subscribe, you know, bell button, all that. Also Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I have a blog, you know, find me anywhere. Also, we have a great Fearless Woman tribe on Facebook um, looking to show up much more going live and hopefully putting some events out online as well to really empower you to know your worth and be fearless in going after anything that you want and having your own breakthroughs that I know you're absolutely capable of having. See you soon, guys. Thanks.